Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. In today's episode of Dr. Hollowed, people who have witnessed things they will never be able to explain share their terrifying stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. I came home from school one day by myself when I was in fifth grade. The house I lived in at the time had a sitting area right inside the front door. On the back right of this room was an arch leading to another sitting area. On the back right was a longish hallway that led to all the bedrooms. So I walked in and immediately went down the hallway to drop my backpack in my room. At the far end was a mirror. I glanced up at it, and when I did, I saw a small shadow figure dart from the back sitting area to the front of the house. It was about the same size as my younger sibling, but I knew they weren't home. I recall that I freaked out and ran into my room. I wanted to get the fuck out, obviously, but that thing had run to the front door. I was imagining it hiding behind some furniture right next to the door. I finally worked up the courage to just dash outside as fast as I could. I ended up waiting on the curb for my dad to get back. I had some other minor oddities in that house, but that's the one that has primarily stuck with me. I worked at a small grocery chain for a bit while in school. They always joked that there was a ghost named Steve who liked to throw bread off the shelves. Steve was supposedly benevolent but just liked to throw bread. For years, I thought they were full of shit. Well, one night near closing time, 8 p.m. ish, it's just me and the assistant manager shooting the shit at our registers. Bread was on the shelves right next to us, but not close enough that we could influence it in any way. A loaf goes flying off the shelf across the aisle. Adam and I just look at each other in disbelief. Steve was fucking real. This bread didn't just slip off the shelf, it was eaten by some unseen force. I saw it happen a few more times before I graduated and moved on to a more professional job. R.I.P. Steve, you mischievous carbohydrate bastard. I was never into my little pony, but a friend of mine gave me one of the ones you could draw on and wash off really easily, so I actually like this toy. I played with it every day, and one day, after school, it just disappeared. I came home from school, grabbed my toy, got called for a snack, and put it on the corner of the counter. When I was done with my snack, it was gone. I was really distraught, and my mom wanted to help, but this is the freaky thing. She had no idea what I was talking about. She said she had never once seen me play with a My Little Pony or any pony toy, and she knew I didn't even like the My Little Pony franchise. A couple of years later, we are tearing up the kitchen, and my mom is building a new one. I'm coming home from school, and I see the old countertop in the back of the truck, with the My Little Pony I had lost years ago, sitting right on the corner where I left it. The scribbles I had drawn were old and faded, but that was the very same pony I had lost. I grabbed it and taped it to my dresser mirror. It sat there for years as a reminder of how strange life can be. I was 15 or so, walking down the hall one night to my bedroom. To get there, I passed the bathroom on the right side of the hall, then, about two feet past the doorway, my sister's room on the left, before my room. I saw my sister in the bathroom, on the right, in a grey nightshirt, oversized t-shirt or something, her long hair and all, leaning toward the mirror. I said good night and she said good night back, but from the left of me, as I passed her bedroom door a couple feet later. Full stop, look left into her room, and she's standing there in her grey shirt and hair down, just like I just saw her in the bathroom a couple seconds prior. I took two steps backward and looked in the bathroom, the light was on, but no one was there. Another time, when I was like six years old, I discovered that my Hot Wheels carrying case could duplicate cars. It was shaped like a steering wheel, with a bunch of slots inside but one slot in the center, where it had a clear plastic cover that could be opened from the outside and was visible from the outside. A perfect spot for your favorite car. I had one in there and opened the case to find the exact same car in the spot immediately below it. I took both out and showed mom and dad, who didn't seem to believe me. I put a different, very unique car in the slot, showed them, then put the case back where it belonged in my closet until the next day. I pulled it out, and a duplicate of the second car was now in the slot below the windowed one. Showed mom and dad, who were now intrigued. I put the first car back in the windowed slot, showed my dad, put the case in my closet, and retrieved it the next day to find a triplicate of the first car in the slot below. It has never happened since, but that thing turned two of my favorite cars into five total. I work in healthcare and have never fully believed in ghosts until now. The second floor only houses a dialysis unit and a mental health unit. Both close at six. They do scopes up there too some days. The original building is gone, but that part is from the 1960s. I have heard voices in the hallways. In the one room bathroom, 
The automatic paper towel dispenser sometimes goes through a roll of paper towel in a night. Behind two closed and locked doors just throws it on the floor. Sanitizers go off. Sometimes you feel like you're being watched. The one thing I cannot explain and that really made me believe it was that I was cleaning in the ore, where they do scopes. It's straight out of the 60s still. It's like entering another world. The rest of the place has white floors and walls. In there, everything is green, the walls are tile, and I think the original sinks, etc. It used to be the birthing suite. Anyway, one night I was alone, cleaning, and a random breeze? I went by my side and brushed my arm. It was freezing cold. It sent a chill down my spine and made my hair stand on end. I still cannot practically explain it. My phone also went from tilde 20% to dead the second it happened. I went down to borrow a charger from one of the nurses, and they said, be glad I don't work overnights with them. I work at another facility now that is from the 1970s, I have never had any experiences there. Even in or around the palliative suit. In the first place, by the palliative, I never experienced anything, but that whole part of the hallway just felt off. When I was young, we went to a beach that had these huge piles of sand. Kids were climbing on them. I got to the top of one and looked over to another pile. A boy was on it, at the top, all alone. He looked at me, smiled, and stood up. Then she fell directly down into the sand. Not off the side, just down. I ran off mine and climbed up that other pile to the top, and even dug down a little freaking that I'd find his hands. But nope, no kid. I never saw him run away. Gone. I went back to my folks and never told anyone. Also, one day while playing in our backyard in the mid-80s, I happened to look up and saw an aircraft coming our way. It came closer, and I saw it was a helicopter. It approached, and I waited for the thumping and noise to start. But it didn't. It barely made any sound at all. It looked like a military helicopter, like an Apache, but black with no tail rotor. It flew over our house, and I remember thinking it should definitely be making a ton of noise, but it didn't. Just a quiet whooshing sound. And it flew away. I was driving out in the middle of nowhere many years ago to visit an old friend who had moved to a rural location. This was back when GPS was pretty new and didn't work too well, especially in desolate areas. Where I was driving, there were no street lights and just cornfields. Long periods of time would elapse without me seeing another vehicle. I saw up ahead what appeared to be an abandoned semi-truck on the side of the road, with no lights or signs of anyone. I naturally slowed down a bit in anticipation of passing it. As I approached, its lights came on, and it pulled out immediately in front of me, causing me to brake hard. It gained speed to maybe 30 to 40 miles per hour, on a 55 mile per hour road, and before I knew it, there was a pickup truck right behind me on my bumper. I didn't see the headlights approach from it, so it more or less came out of nowhere. I drove for maybe a mile and a half sandwiched between the two, unsure of what to do, as something felt off about the situation. I saw a side street upcoming and took a quick right to get out of the pickle I was in. I lost my GPS signal and was on back roads for probably 5 minutes trying to regain some sort of signal and find my way back to the main road. I finally got to a stop sign that seemed to intersect a main road and sat there for a minute trying to figure out if I should turn right or left. While trying to gauge a sense of direction, I noticed headlights coming from the left, so I waited for them to pass before I pulled out. Creepy as hell, it was the same semi-truck and pickup truck behind it that passed right in front of me. It was a very easy decision to turn left after that. It took me forever to figure out how to get to the house I was navigating to, and I was definitely spooked when I finally got there. It made for some interesting conversation. I'm Polish, and there is an old tradition, apparently only still practiced in the area I'm from, that the body is brought home for the prayers on the eve of the funeral and stays overnight. Then, on the day, it is followed to the church by the morning procession, where the usual steps happen. During my dad's funeral, a light bulb exploded the very second they shut the coffin. That memory still gives me chills. Edit. This got me thinking about home and death and brought back another thing I can't explain. There are two subsequent bends on a local road, five kilometers of twisty tarmac through the woods, most of it restricted to 70. We call them the S, because they are basically almost in that shape. The surface is profiled the wrong way around, and it can really catch you out. My conservative estimated average is 15 accidents a year, which I knew about. Also, both corners are so tight that a lot of people use both lanes to flatten the curve. If I remember right, they put a 40 km per hour limit on that bit, but no one followed it, and neither did I on that day. I was driving through there right after a heavy rain, and right as I was turning into the first corner, I caught a patch of standing water with my outer rear. That sent me into a spin, 
which I couldn't counter even with the steering wheel in full lock the other way. This would have been a sweaty palm moment even without another car coming from the opposite direction. I still have no idea how I ended up following the corner tightly enough that he had enough room to clear me, even though I was fully sideways at that moment. I spun 450 degrees and came to a stop on the grass shoulder, side parallel to the edge, inches away, of a deep and wide concrete ditch that runs on one side of it, another thing that makes it a damn death trap. I don't think I had great odds of surviving a side impact like that, not in the old Fiesta I was in. That car was later written off after I was T-boned, and a slower impact caused the frame to give in and the door to cave in enough that you couldn't sit straight behind the wheel. That near miss would have been way more severe. And knowing that road since I was a kid, I would never expect to follow the trajectory that I did. These two events are why I'm only 98% atheist. Once I was on a bike ride with my dog, who is 13 pounds. The entire bike ride was totally fine. But then we got home on our own. We'd done this a hundred times before, but this time a chipmunk crossed our path, and before I could get out leave it, he went under my bike tires. Full body, my full weight on him. His harness got caught on the spokes, and I thought I'd broken his back, but as soon as I undid his harness, he got up and ran back to the back deck to get in the house. I called the ER vet to ask what I should do, as this was during 2020, and they required you to call beforehand. They said since he seemed fine to not bring him in, but to keep a close eye for a list of symptoms they gave me. I still have no idea how this 13 pound little ass dog came away from a whole ass bike plus a human on top of him, and all he got was some very light road rash on his muzzle, I literally had to look closely to see it, and it was just kind of pink and slightly thinner. I have yet to go biking with a dog again. I had a near death experience when I was a little boy. Now I see ghosts. It happens mostly when I enter buildings that were favorite places for them when they were alive. I don't always see them, but often enough. Many of them are confused and don't know they're dead. I've never been attacked by one, and I resent those Ghost Finder TV shows where every ghost is assumed to be evil. You all assume that whatever you were thinking and doing while alive will continue to be important after death. Nope. And then those TV shows, again, TV, that tell you every death must be avenged so a ghost can rest. Bull. Not true. That's all based on the narrow, earth-bound attitude that every injustice that happens on earth is just as important in heaven. In simple terms, death is simply a release from all the negative stuff that people do to each other down here. So enjoy your life, help others whenever you can, and quit assuming that your afterlife will be actively tied to your perceived mistakes during life on earth. The trick to having a good afterlife is to seek love through the light that is right in front of you upon your death. That light is generated by the power that created us, and I'm glad you have returned home. Light is the key. I can talk to spirits sometimes too, and I always try to encourage them to seek the light so their confusion will end. My sister and I shared a room at an early age, she was a really light sleeper, and we lived fairly close to an airport. Passing planes would regularly wake her up, but at night there were few enough of them to where she could go right back to sleep pretty easily. One night, she wakes me up, sitting in the chair next to our window. The passing planes were frequent enough to the point where she felt the need to look out the window to see what was going on. I looked out the window, and there were about seven or eight passenger planes circling a few miles around the house, as if they weren't being allowed to land and were circling the landing zone. In the middle of them, pretty high in the sky, a single light that looked like a very bright star was moving unnaturally. Up and down, side to side, at a rapid and random pace. It was moving way too fast laterally to be any kind of plane or helicopter. It moved suddenly and sporadically in that fashion for about 10 minutes while the same seven or eight planes continued to circle the area. Suddenly, the light moved up, then down to damn near tree level, and then flew off into the night sky and disappeared. If it were at the same altitude as the planes around it, that thing would have taken off way faster than the speed of sound. The planes left the circle one by one, and I'm assuming they resumed landing procedures. Pretty assuredly a UFO of some sort, but man, that shit blew my young mind. In my old apartment, there was always one specific corner of the living room that babies and animals were always obsessed with. It didn't matter if it was one of my siblings or a kid, we would be babysitting. Same thing with the pets, both our cat and the numerous dogs and cats we've petted over the years, but they would always obsessively stare at the same corner of the living room as if someone were talking to them. And no, we never had anything like a TV, a photo, or anything else in that corner that would attract them. It was an empty corner, no big problems or anything, and it was on the far left side of the house, not at all somewhere where your gaze would naturally rest or drift towards if you were just sitting in the middle of the living room. None of the furniture ever pointed over to that corner either. It was fucking weird. 
When I was 13-ish, I was staying the night at my friend's house. We were really into ghosts and ghost hunting at the time. There used to be this app called Ghost Radar. It had a literal ghost radar and a speech generator. It was supposed to intercept the idea of what a ghost was saying or thinking and summarize it into a word. A digital sense in a way. It usually just says random words. We thought it was cool, and we were ghost hunters. Anyway, this particular night we had it set up on his iHome and were watching creepy YouTube videos. It did its usual randomness, but suddenly it started making sense. The words were connected and coherent. I don't remember the words exactly, but it was very dark and creepy. It said something along the lines of kill, die, or death, and the exact moment the basement lights dimmed. We ran out, screaming. After some time had passed, we decided to gather our things and sleep in the room upstairs. The dimmer switch was moved halfway down when we checked. It really freaked us out, and I still get cold chills thinking about it. I'm 90% sure the app was a hoax, but I still can't explain how the physical dimmer switch moved to this day. Me and a friend were staying in a cottage in the Scottish borders on the way home from a trip in the north. It wasn't far from Westerkirk, which I remember because there was a blue plaque on a car park wall commemorating Thomas Telford. Anyway, about 11 p.m., we went outside for the pre-kit piss. It was about as dark and quiet as it gets. I looked up and saw a plane flying overhead. It was low enough that we could see the lights on the wings as separate lights, but it made no sound at all. I pointed it out to my friend, and we stood there for a bit, all WT fed out. A minute or so later another passed over, also silent until it disappeared over the woods the Bothy was in, and then we heard an engine sound that persisted for maybe 20 seconds after it was well out of sight, as if it were lagging behind the second plane. Neither were going particularly fast, certainly not supersonic, and the engine sound just sounded as you'd expect for a plane flying that low overhead. If it wasn't for the sound, I would have put it down to drones, though who'd be flying them out there at that time? I can't explain it to this day. If anyone knows what might have happened, I'd love to hear it. The year was 1987. I was working on a farm outside of Newton, Iowa. I just got off for the day and went to head back home to Laurel, Iowa, where I had rented a place for a few months. I was already late for a party I was invited to that evening at a building next door to my place, so I looked at my watch, it was approaching 7.45 p.m., and I was tired and hungry. But I didn't have my car, as it was in the shop. I had gotten a ride to the farm that morning, and no one was left but me, so I was stranded. This was the time before cell phones were common and practical, and the farm didn't have a working phone at the time. It was a long walk to my place via Route 14, so I started walking. The party started at 8, but I figured even if I was late, it was better than not going at all. Besides, it's right next door to my home anyway. So I'll go home and change and head over, as I'm sure there will be food at the party, I thought. After about a minute down the road, an old pickup truck pulls up beside me and opens the door. It looks like a green 1950 Ford F1 pickup, a real classic. Come on in, I'll give you a ride. A man in a tall hat and overcoat yells at me from inside the truck. He looked like a combination of Abraham Lincoln and Uncle Fester. Strangely dressed, strange mannerisms he smelled like mothballs, and he kept laughing to himself as if he were telling himself a funny joke or something. I turned to tell him my address and thank him, and he asked me if I knew about the party. I said, yeah, I plan on going. Are you going, too? He just turned his head right at me, stared at me with dead eyes, and said, I am the life of the party. Akakai. This guy was flat out weird. I thought to myself, and before I got a chance to say anything else, he stopped and sternly told me to get out now. I got out, closed the door, and he drove off in a cloud of dust. I looked up, and I was home. But I never told him where I lived. Was this guy stalking me? Confused, I changed my clothes real quick and went next door, where the party was just getting started. I said, sorry, I'm late, and they assured me that I was right on time. I checked my watch, it was 7.55. How did I get here in less than 10 minutes? The shortest route is over 20 miles from Newton to Laurel, no matter which road you take. Can a 1950 Ford F1 truck go 120 miles per hour, on a rural, winding country road, and without me noticing? I related all of this to the folks at the party, and they all turned white. Then, one of the gentlemen steps forward and tells me he is the deputy sheriff of the town, and they had to close both routes 14 due to a fatal accident that occurred that evening. He radioed into the patrolman and checked, and he said, yes, the road is still closed to traffic on both ends. So how did I get there? A friend of mine was visiting, and we were in the garden with my dog. At some point, we went inside for water but left the dog outside, he was fenced in. 
While in the kitchen, we heard barking, but not from the garden. It was coming from the opposite side of the house. My friend and I didn't say a word to each other while walking towards the sounds, we spoke of it later and how it felt like being in an almost dreamlike state. It sounds silly, but it really felt like we were following a script rather than being active characters. The barking came from the living room, and when I opened the door, my dog flew past me. He couldn't get out of there fast enough. I cannot explain how he ended up there. The door was closed, as were the windows. It would not be possible to go to the living room without passing the kitchen, and my friend was with me the whole time. I am also 100% sure the dogs were one and the same, as he had a very distinct pattern, there was also no second dog in the garden, I checked. I often had an odd feeling in this apartment and was glad to move. It happened in the early 2000s. Like most teens, I would stay up quite late, especially on weekends. One time, when I was about 15 to 16, I had finished watching an episode of South Park after midnight. As I walked upstairs to go to bed, I heard music coming from my basement. I had a stereo down there and would listen to music while playing video games. The strange thing about this was the type of music. It was old-timey western music, think 1800s Wild West saloon type. It wasn't overly loud, but enough that I could hear it. I figured maybe the stereo had somehow been programmed to go on. The next morning, I come downstairs and approach the basement stairwell. No music. I ask my dad and brother if they've been downstairs to the basement at all that morning. Nope. Nobody had been to the basement. When I finally had the guts to go downstairs, the stereo seemed fine. It wasn't programmed to turn on, and to this day, I cannot explain what could have been making that saloon music. No radio station would have been playing that, and there was no piano or anything that would have made that music. It still trips me out to this day thinking of it. When me and my ex-girlfriend were living together in my 100-year-old home, weird things would happen to her. On two occasions when she was in the kitchen, a drop of water materialized out of nowhere and landed on her. We were literally just sitting there looking at the drop of water, like, WTF? There is actually a name for this phenomenon. It is called paranormal water. Then, on two other occasions, also in the kitchen, I heard her yell. She said she felt like something poked her in the hand. On both occasions, I looked at her hand, and there was a tiny red mark, the size of the tip of a needle, where she had been stung. When I would work upstairs alone on a bathroom renovation, many times I would start feeling a presence up there that was pressuring me to leave. One night, I stayed extra late despite feeling strong pressure to leave because I wanted to get to a stopping point. When I finally went downstairs, it was like my apartment had been fucked with. Lights that I always left on were turned off, and vice versa. The bathroom door, which I always leave open, was now shut, and the light, which I always leave on, was off. A lamp in the bedroom I always leave on was turned off, and the overhead lamp, which I never use, was turned on. I switched off the overhead lamp and turned the other lamp on. I took a bath to relax, and I felt a cold breeze in the apartment, all of the windows were closed. One night I was asleep and awoke to a loud humming noise that seemed to be getting closer and closer. I got out of bed and peered out the window down the street. All of a sudden, this glowing orb started floating down the street towards me along with a loud humming noise. Then it got closer and closer and closer, then rose up to the second floor window and just blasted through my head with light. The next thing I knew, it went back the very same way it came from. I will never be able to even grasp what. It wasn't a dream either, because there were two other friends in the room, and crazy enough, they never heard anything and didn't even wake up. Second story, while I was about 15, I was at a sleepover birthday party with a few friends. We all slept in the TV room in the basement darkness. A couple hours into my sleep, I woke up to see a light on. It was as if somebody opened a door and the light came through. All of a sudden, there was a person in the door light who kind of looked like my friend. All I could say was hello. But nothing, everyone sleeping, I'm standing up in the complete darkness other than a yellowy door into oblivion, there literally was just a wall normally, but it was as if I woke up to see a portal into a different world. In a nature park or trail I like to walk in, I once met a crazy guy who talked my ears off for almost two hours. I was just being nice and responding to his small talk when I got roped in. It was mostly about insane conspiracy theories and how his family rejected him. During his insane rant, some other guy walked up to us and tried to join the conversation while standing like 30 feet away. He was drunk and holding a bottle of booze. The crazy guy didn't like that and kept screaming at him to go away. But the drunk guy wasn't getting the message and would just stand there, listening in on the crazy guy, occasionally making a contribution, and getting screamed at some more. 
I don't think I said anything of substance after the first few minutes and was mostly just replying with oh yeah, really, oh wow and nodding my head while desperately looking for something out. As for the drunk guy, I have never seen anybody just wander around a forest drunk like that before. I felt bad for him because I would have rather talked to him instead. The clutch cable broke, leaving me stranded on what was about to become a very busy road. I was coming home from work after working thirds, and it was about 45 minutes from becoming like six lanes of bumper to bumper traffic. I had a four cylinder Mustang, so I was trying to push it off the road and into a parking lot by myself, but I had to push it up a hill on the side street. Out of nowhere, a man appears behind me and starts to push from behind, and when I get to the turn in for the restaurant, he says to get in and steer. I went down the hill on the other side, whipped into a spot, and hopped out to thank him. The dude was gone. There was no way he got back down the hill, into his car, and away before I got out of my car. Usain Bolt couldn't have done it. I never heard a car door, an engine sound, footsteps behind me, or any indication that the guy existed before appearing behind my car. Dude appeared out of nowhere, helped, and then disappeared. The extra crazy thing is, my wife had something similar happen to her back in college when she got a flat tire. Dude showed up out of nowhere, told her to get back in her car, changed her tire, then disappeared. This was at night, and a truck appeared, but it never turned around or passed her. The guy and truck just vanished after the tire was fixed. I believe in the paranormal already, to an extent, I am very skeptical when it comes to many sittings and videos, but I have witnessed things I truly cannot explain. But one that really sticks out. I was writing a book once and talking to a friend on Facebook about how I wanted to base one of the characters on my grandmother, who had passed a year prior. As I was sharing memories I had of her, I heard several thumps falling down the stairs. When they stopped, I went and looked and almost started crying. It was the VHS copy of The Road to El Dorado that was behind a closed door in our storage closet. It was midnight, everyone else was asleep, and the door to the closet was closed when I went to look. The reason it is significant is that it was the only movie in English that my grandmother enjoyed. My mom's entire side of the family is from El Salvador, and my grandmother never spoke English, but every time she came over, she would ask my sister or me to put that movie on. I was half asleep in my bed, and I got up to go to the bathroom. The way my bed was set up at the time gave me a direct view into the hallway. Since my door was open, I could see out of my bedroom. I don't want to turn the lights on and wake my parents, so I try to go in the dark as quietly as possible. When I stepped out into my hallway and looked into my living room, I saw a dim white light, just enough to see an outline. It looked like a person, and since there weren't any lights on, I got an eerie feeling. It just stayed there and seemed to stare back at me. I don't know if it was just shadows playing tricks on my mind or maybe even a ghost. I just went back to bed after that. I was about 8 at the time, so I don't have a perfect replay. I still live in the same house, and when I'm home alone, it just feels weird, not really scary, so I can still deal with it. Also, small things disappear occasionally, so maybe a ghost. I would have been about 7 years old at the time and was staying with my father and stepmother for the weekend. One day, it was nice and sunny, and we went to the local public swimming pools. The parents had set up a picnic blanket out on the lawn area to relax, and I left my water bottle and snacks there while I went over to the pool for a swim. After some time, I wanted some refreshments, so I exited the pool and walked across the grass to my dad and stepmother. Except it wasn't them sitting on the picnic blanket. It was another couple who I didn't recognize at all. The picnic blanket was definitely the same, and my water bottle and snacks were still sitting precisely where I had left them. I had no idea who these people were. I looked around to see if I'd gone to the wrong spot, and while there were other people sitting about on the lawn, I was certain that I was in the right spot. But I couldn't see my parents anywhere. I felt really uneasy about grabbing my stuff, so I looked at these people a bit longer, trying to work out who they were. They briefly looked back at me, but in a disinterested manner. Confused, I left them and went back to the pool. I entered the water wondering who those people were, and where did my parents go? I looked back, and the strangers were still there on our blanket with our stuff, talking to each other. I swam around for a bit amongst the other kids in the pool before I found myself back on the side of the pool, near where the picnic blanket was. I look for the strangers, but I see my dad and stepmother back on the blanket again. I got out of the pool and walked over to ask my dad about the strangers who were here while he and my stepmother were gone somewhere. My dad tells me they haven't been anywhere and that they've been here the whole time. I wanted to disbelieve him, but he wasn't one to pull pranks or anything like that. I asked him, so nobody else has been here? My dad said some random kid came right over from the pool not long ago and stared at them before going back to the pool again, 
but nobody else had been here. I've spoken to my dad about this for years afterwards, which he still remembers to this day, more than 40 years later, because he says I looked so upset and became distant after talking to me that day, and he was really concerned that something was wrong with me. Of course, I have shared with him my recollections of events, but we are both still very bewildered about what actually happened that day. Years ago, I was dating a lady who lived on an acreage in the middle of nowhere. One day during the winter, we were going to her place, and it required going up the long and very steep straight road, and she told me, you need to be careful going down this road because it ends with a T-intersection at the bottom of the hill and there is a steep ditch on the other side of the intersection. Every year, there are people that slide down the hill, through the intersection, and flip into the ditch below. Since it's so steep, you can't see a car wreck in that ditch from the road, so sometimes it takes many hours or days before the car wreck is discovered. Be careful. I took her warning to heart, but. A few days later, I am heading down that hilly road, going very slowly, yet my back end loses traction, and my car slowly turns horizontal to the road as I continue to slide down it. No matter what I tried, I couldn't right the car. I slide to the bottom of the hill, then through the intersection, and at that moment I knew I was going over the side. I didn't expect to live long enough to be found. At the very last second, I grip the steering wheel tightly and yell, God, please help. As soon as the words left my lips, the car stopped dead. I am not a religious man, but I was saved with less than three inches to spare. I cannot explain what happened, but damn, am I thankful it did. Thank you, God, truly. Update, I described my vehicle as a car, but in fact it was a Ford Aerostar, minivan, which was rear-wheel drive. This was also before cell phones were everywhere, 20 years ago, and her area definitely didn't have coverage. <laughs>